Hey everybody, welcome back to Disillusioned Young Man Talks About the Maladies of Postmodern Society. When a man and a woman love each other very much, what usually happens is they take off all their clothes and they go to a secluded area, often referred to as the Temple of Pork by scholars and millions of other Americans, wherein what happens inside is largely a mystery. My buddy uh, Raul said it's pretty crazy, but promptly thereafter a flying squirrel will deliver them a basket on their doorstep and inside of this basket is something called a baby, which is basically like a little guy. Um, and then right there what you, what you have is called a family. Now the alleged issue is that this whole process is happening a lot less. Marriage rates are falling, birth rates are falling. And people will go through this whole process, the temple of pork and all, and then not stay together afterwards. And I mean, I totally understand. I can hardly live with myself, let alone some dumbass bitch. <laughs> Am I right? But the real question to ask here is why is this happening? And also like, is this even really a bad thing? Or is this just an antiquated oppressive system that we're happy to be rid of? As a uh, anthropologist and a graduate from the University of Phoenix, I seek to answer these questions. But first, let me establish that the institution of the family is objectively failing. People are getting married later, if at all, and then when they do get married, they get divorced most of the time. Nobody's having kids. When's the last time you saw a pregnant lady walking around? And if anyone would notice that they're gone, it would be me because whenever I see them, I, really, I like to chase them around and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's happening. The population pyramid is completely inverting. Like, you know, let's say hypothetically, if I was into minors, you know, in this hypothetical world where I'm really interested in seeing minors, the, I would be in a pretty bad situation. But anyways, let me take you through chronologically why this is happening. Long before TikTok or electric cars or the beloved ASMR mommy dommy girlfriend snuggles her good boy, when children used to frolic the fields and pick berries from the vibrant bushes, the pre-industrial era. In this era, people lived in extended families. Both parents, lots of siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, all lived in the same community and oftentimes even under the same roof. In this system, both parents stayed at home because generally work and home were the same thing. It was the agricultural economy. And this was the system for most of history. And I don't wanna make it out like this was perfect or anything, you know, every once in a while, some dudes would roll through your village, start throwing javelins at all the bitches and having their way with your women and, you know, killing all, killing everybody, which wasn't very chill. But then a young fella named Philip Industry created something called the Industrial Revolution and everything changed. In the new industrial economy, the extended family was a lot less viable and we transitioned into the nuclear family unit instead, which fit the needs of industrialization a lot more. In the nuclear family unit, the husband goes to work because men are the stronger laborers, and the wife stays home and is the homemaker. They take care of the kids. The nuclear family unit worked well, but because it's not like our biological standard, it's not how we've lived for most of human history, uh, it's a little bit more fragile and it requires certain conditions for it to work well. As you will see, these conditions are no longer being met now. And in some ways, the extended family is ideal, but generally now people are a lot more spread apart. If you can get everybody in the same place, great. But the nuclear family is what we need to make work. And the nuclear family did survive and seemed to work for a long time. It peaked between 1945 and 1965 in America which was the golden age of marriage where 95% of people got married. Big money, bitch. Hey, grandma. You see, it's growing. It's no secret that we have a lot of economic problems today in the Western world. And while we might have high, like, GDP or whatever, this is awfully misleading. A man used to go to work and with his one wage, be able to provide for himself and a whole family and buy and own a house. This was true whether it was an office setting, hard labor, or even a service job. 
But now men with these types of careers have a hard time supporting just themselves a lot of times, which is oftentimes what's happening now due to the stats I talked about before. Guys are working just to go home and support themselves, which is kind of like, what's the point anymore? Because the only real reason people had motivation to work is because of Cooter. To have a family and support them, put food on the table, it was a sacrifice. But now, what are you working for? To go home and, like, like Valorant? Starfield? It gets good after 15 hours. Are you out of your fucking mind? Every second, death draws nearer and you get older. And you want me to spend 15 hours on a game before it gets any fun at all? Do you want to be alive? I don't think you do. I think it's almost like you have nothing to live for. But anyways, why is the economy like this? Why can men really no longer buy a house or support a family on their one income? The first thing is inflation. The purchasing power of the dollar is less and wages have not been raised enough to account for this. And it's like whatever if $5 footlongs now are $850, but if a $500,000 house is now $850,000, that's where it really is a big problem. The second thing is women starting to work, which doubles the labor force and lowers the wages. So your, 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 uh, your work as a man is no longer valuable. Ladies can do it too. Step your game up, you fucking loser. This is a quote from Friedrich Engels, who was a close associate of Karl Marx. The first condition for the liberation of the wife is to bring the whole female sex into public industry and this in turn abolishes the monogamous family as the economic unit of society. So women now compete with men for jobs, which gets rid of what was called the family wage, which existed before, which, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory what that is. Men were paid a wage that was meant to support an entire family with the one pay. But this is a bit of a double whammy because there's the economic angle, but also women working and having careers will delay and get in the way of marriage in general because there's nobody at home. To be fair, um, women do kind of have to work now. Um, there's this sort of, on the conservative side of thing, there's this idea where it's like, no, people are using the economy as like a big, uh, as an excuse. They could still have kids. It's like, I don't know. I don't think it's a good idea to have a kid if you are gonna struggle to provide basic things. It's completely reasonable to want to be stable before you have kids and that used it's just now that's really hard in 1970 only 36 percent of people from 20 to 24 were unmarried the reason why you barely see any young families now is because largely it's not economically possible it's no coincidence that the only other time in american history that we've fallen below replacement level birth rate was during the Great Depression. So to summarize what I've said so far, in the pre-industrial economy, both parents stayed at home and this produced the, the extended family. In the industrial economy, the mother stayed at home and this produced the nuclear family. In the post-industrial economy, everybody works, nobody's at home, and this produces no family. Before we go into more social or political factors, I wanted to bring up something that I think is pretty underrated. Around the 60s is when we widely started using plastic to package things. And also around this time in the mid 20th century is when we started, to, you know, really using chemicals, putting chemicals in a lot of shit, mass producing things with chemicals. As you may know, plastic has BPA or BPS uh, phthalates, which are estrogenic and pretty toxic. Tap water has atrazine, which is an endocrine disrupting chemical. Most cosmetics, soaps and fragrances you might use every day are usually riddled with this kind of shit. All of these things disrupt your hormones. Your hormones are what tell you how to fuck. Things you're putting on every day, these, these lotions, whatever. Got phthalates, malates, shalites, israelites, all these weird ass chemicals. You may as well be rubbing cum all over your face. Also in our diet, lots of processed foods can have the same effect, but it is because of these factors that sperm counts are dropping, testosterone is lowering, women are having much more miscarriages, and this is going to curtail the ability for people to form families because first, uh, your nut's not even working anymore. It's swimming around, 
in your balls and you know it there's like microplastics in there it comes across a microplastic and swims it and like chokes on it your nuts like <coughs> it's the same thing that's happening with the turtles and the straws i mean i don't really give a fuck about that you'll forgive me for caring more about what happens to my precious my two very own nuts but this also tells us that a lot of things that we might think are social are actually like there's a sinister underpinning that's going on here that's the real that can be the real catalyst of all of it even if people want to have kids they get there they surpass all these obstacles then they have a miscarriage i mean that's awful and also how everybody's hormones are being messed with this will generally impact gender relations um you know if one of your homeboys suddenly starts craving ween don't think it's because he's watching too much Netflix or these liberals are brainwashing him. He's probably one of those guys who drinks all of his water out of those milk cartons. Those plastic milk cartons, which are like all the microplastics seeping into his water. The phthalates. He may as well be drinking nut. Walk along through the streets of the city. Oh, we gotta stop fucking because more people will make more people and then we'll run out of all the resources. What do you have, Asperger's? Mmm, tasty bread. <laughs> but really, I mean, everyone was buying this shit. Overpopulation being some big problem on the horizon, really threatening humanity. And there was one big book that spurred this called The Population Bomb by Paul Ehrlich. Um, of course, all of his assumptions ended up being completely wrong. And looking back at it, it really was all just like pie-in-the-sky fear-mongering. There was another guy who said the world's population would double every 25 years, but our resources couldn't double every 25 years, so that means we're, the world's gonna end. Which, like, is a very, it's like an overly systematic, autistic way of looking at it. All of these predictions and the general premise turned out to be completely false, but even if it wasn't, you know, the third world's not gonna listen they're gonna keep on but the reason it's false is because people have minds and intellect and the more people there are the more geniuses there will be that will be able to find new ways to cultivate multiply find new solutions for resources you fucking dipshit there's still plenty of land what we really have is a population dispersion problem that's why there's like a lot of traffic or whatever maybe where you live that's also a, st a city planning issue. And not even like beautiful land that we would destroy by putting Walmarts, just like fields where there's dead ass nothing and, and you could fertilize those fields and, and put shit there. A lot of people stopped having kids or even got the idea that it was selfish to have kids because of this whole overpopulation. It was a giant propaganda campaign. Get it out of your head. But anyways, what you all been waiting for, let's talk about these dumbass broads. I said certified freak seven days a week. Wet ass P word. Make that pullout game weak. Here's a quote from the Declaration of Feminism. Marriage has existed for the benefit of men and has been a legally sanctioned method of control over women. We must work to destroy it. The end of the institution of marriage is a necessary condition for the liberation of women. Therefore, it is important for us to encourage women to leave their husbands and not to live individually with men. All of history must be rewritten in terms of oppression of women. We must go back to ancient female religions like witchcraft. And low-key, that witchcraft thing, that's kind of what we're seeing with a lot of girls nowadays with the astrology and everything. And look, I like, you know, goth crystal mommies just as much as the next guy, all right? Love them. But you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to deduce that these bitches are a threat to the common good. If you have any sort of personal experiences with them, that will only validate this claim because you have a falling out and now they're making voodoo dolls, shooting hexes at you. You know, some bitch threw a fireball at me the other day. No, I'm just playing around. I don't talk to women. But um, look, I'm not being biased here. Okay, as you know, when it comes to politics, I agree with you again i'm just saying why we don't have families anymore people try to have this gray area that doesn't exist feminism is directly opposed to families all of the founders all of the thinkers that made feminism say the same thing this is because in the feminist belief system marriage is like bondage family is antiquated it's oppressive 
So, you know, if you're a feminist, you can't argue that like, no, feminism isn't destroying family. You'd say, yes, it is. And that's a good thing. That's what I want because it's bad. But this is, this is kind of the problem is a lot of people who would even call themselves feminists wouldn't agree with everything in that quote, but that's what it's founded on. And the texts like these are massively influential. And I already talked about women in the workforce, but it's genders being equated in other ways that curtail marriage and family. This general perception that marriage is bondage has led people to just like, they cohabitate, but they're not married. They're just like playing house with some dogs. Um, and, it, and it doesn't last because they never truly fully commit, um, which leads to serial monogamy. It's just people getting in monogamous relationships consecutively one after the other. And then there's this whole thing called divorce court where, you know, let's say you fall in love with a bitch, right? Uh, blase, blase, years down the line, she gonna leave your ass take half your shit, and then go shack up with a fella who's probably better at sucking and fucking. And the judge will be like, yup, you go. And this right here is a, is a manifestation of the problem, but it's also a problem in itself. Because when a relationship inevitably hits a rough patch, that's always an option. And it's not too bad of an option for the women. She could just, she, you know, she hits a lick. I'm also gonna put contraception in this category. That's the, the point of it, is like to stop having kids. Um, and it has, you know, a lot of social effects. It obviously gets in the way of having families. There's also this thing with birth control where the hormone disrupting chemicals inside of it are very resilient. So some scoozy will pop the birth control then you're, when they urinate, the chemicals are still there and it ends up getting to the water supply and then, you know, you end up drinking it. And that's especially disarming for me because I usually have women piss directly into my mouth. There's a guy named Bishop Charles, and here's some points he wrote about the consequences of contraceptive mindset. And I, obviously I don't agree with this unless you do. But uh, it, it says it turns women into instruments of selfish enjoyment. It leads to widespread infidelity and lower morality. And largely, it leads to dehumanization of the species of humans. I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. Our culture now has a very different view of morality from when the nuclear family was thriving. It's, it's a drift away from religion. It's secular. It's individualistic. Marriage, monogamy, the family life now all seem like incredibly boring with our new value system. Everyone can travel and focus on career. Marriage is something you do later on when you're old and you, you, you have nothing else to do. Promiscuity is celebrated. Sex is something that's just more fun. It's chill. Not a big deal. Largely because the consequences of casual sex have been removed or at least they appear that way but we know that living a promiscuous lifestyle gets in the way of having a permanent successful monogamous relationship in the future and kids are generally valued a lot less uh, we don't really care about them the final large factor which is destroying the family unit is the internet and this is something i've talked about more so i'm gonna keep it short but basically, you know, the male virginity skyrocketed right around when social media started becoming widely adopted. Because basically these technologies came out of nowhere so fast, our psychology was not prepared. And a lot of aspects of our psychology became maladaptive in light of the digital age. And really what the internet and uh, media in general did is it propagated and fueled a lot of the social changes I talked about in the last point, promiscuity, lust, greed, uh, the internet's like the ultimate uh, vehicle for narcissism. Now there's all this comparing yourself to all these people on the internet. Um, it feeds this individualistic idea that everyone can be exceptional, that everyone should try to be exceptional. You know, looking at all these people having all this fun, your life, which may be more modest, will seem boring in comparison, make you get this weird sense of FOMO, make you want to try all these other things. Um, again, delaying things that will seem boring 
in our new cultural hierarchy of needs, which are having kids, living a living a family life. It has a lot of social ramifications. A lot of communities are now online. All these people are inside becoming autistic. So those are the reasons that family is failing. Is this a total bad thing? Maybe we're moving towards a new age of freedom and not being restricted by these archaic institutions. Or is this a bad thing? Is the world going to collapse because we don't have a we don't have healthy demographics of young people coming up? Well, the answer to me seems kind of obvious. Do you love your family? I would hope so. But I kind of see, I kind of get where it's coming from. The idea is that you find these connections and relationships from other people and you don't have to be oppressed by this family system or by marriage and you'll have all these these relationships and you could live by yourself and, and have freedom. But there are problems with this. The first is that your family, ideally or generally, are going to be the people who will love you, be there for you, or at least think about you or care for you unconditionally because you're bound by blood. And other friendships are generally more connected through shared interests or something you provide. They're more transactional. So the system where you don't have a family who will always be there and you're relying on all these friends for your support, um, it's not very stable. It leads to uh, just fragmented mechanical type relationships that start and fall apart easier. The second problem is that this is not at all sustainable. This system where you rely on friends, it can last for maybe one or two generations and those generations already passed. In Generation Z, we're already seeing the social consequences of not having strong families. It fundamentally changes how kids are socialized to where now they're having trouble. Because when you're a kid, families organize playdates. So it's good that there would be a lot of families. And also, there's a greater chance you'll be an only child in this kind of system. You are going to be a lot more alone as a young person growing up in a geriatric society, especially without sibling. There's this whole male loneliness issue that's like beat to the ground at this point. <clears throat> but a lot of people blame the internet, and that's true. The internet uh, is a big factor, but it's really like an accelerant. The real underlying problem is demographic, is the family structure. If we had healthy demographics, the social issues and the digitization of community that the internet has created would be a lot more navigatable because there would be more young people, more things going on. All you'd have to do is go outside and there would be, uh, you know, but now you go outside and everyone's 40, like I said uh, in the growing up video. So it's a lot harder. This also creates an empathy gap because uh, there are less people who have grown up with this type of technology than there are millennials or Gen X. And there's a divide there because uh, there's a lack of understanding. And if there were more young people there to solve this problem, that would be a big help. It's whatever, don't think about it too much. A lot of my audience are young, are young guys. Just go outside, have fun, you know. Don't mind the fact that a lot of you were only children and both of your parents were working and because nobody's been having kids for the last 40 years, you probably grew up in a neighborhood that didn't have a lot of other kids. So you grew up alone in a house by yourself with the internet, um, completely altering how you were socialized. Don't worry about that. Everything's fine. All right, let me drop the facade. Here's a call to action, a solution to what we've been talking about. You just need to start porking and, you know, don't pull out. Actually, that's probably not going to help. A lot of the guys are trying just to get a crumb. Uh, I guess calling, you know what? Calling out to my 5% female audience. I need you to get busy, all right? I'm sorry to be so blunt, but you need to start pumping these little fuckers out. Find a young man to get you ripe with child, do not uh, prioritize any of this self-indulgent bullshit. The fate of the world is in your hands. Nah, but it's actually more complicated than that. If this were to turn around, it would require a massive cultural 
shift. We would need to get rid of things that are already, like, well-established. Um, so maybe we have to find a new way forward. I don't know. Don't think about it too much. It's